the joy of the Lord is my strength. In a moment, we're going to read a passage where the first time the joy of the Lord Jesus is expressed in Scripture. And that was a coincidence, uh, but very important. And this morning, I went to Jefferson Christian Academy and spoke at their chapel for the youngest group. I held this up and I asked, what is this? And a, a child said, it's a Bible. And I said, no, no. If you look at it this way, what is it, right? And, and uh, there was a little child in the back, raised their hand and said, it's inoculars. And I said, I've never heard it called inoculars, but okay, it's binoculars. And so I took it out and I and, uh, took the caps off of it. And I said, if I did this at night outside, what am I looking at? And, and it was a unanimous understanding that I would be looking at the stars. And that is a beautiful thing to look at the stars at night and being able to see the, the, what, what God called the lesser light that ruled the night, the, star, the, the, the stars and the moon. And so those stars are a light in the sky that we can look at. And what's great is they're affixed there to where they've been there for thousands of years and they haven't moved, except for when you just happen to see a shooting star. When it moves across the sky, it really is incredible because it is so rare to catch a star in motion. And, and so I, I thought about, and in fact, I was reading this morning, uh, starting through the New Testament, and I, and I got into chapter 2. In verse 1, it says, Now after Jesus was, was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born, king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When's the last time you saw a star rise? Well, if you were able to glance outside early this morning, you may have seen a star rise in the east. Maybe that tonight you saw it set in the west. The sun is a star. It's just closer than all the others. But generally, we don't think about a star rising. We don't think of a star moving other than the sun or a shooting star. But what's interesting is these wise men, uh, when I was reading through this, this version that, that I've started, uh, it actually mentioned that these wise men were astrologers. And I never noticed that before. So I went back and did some research, and the word for the wise men is where we get magi. That, that's just an English word for the Greek. But it meant wisdom based on the viewing of the stars, astrologers. So you think about their wisdom was based on viewing the sky. You know, we can look at the, we can look at the North Star. We could get our direction based on that star because it is always pointing north. And that would be something to where we would be able to read the sky in order to be able to get around. That was literally their GPS. And so what's interesting is these are people who knew the constellations. They knew the wisdom of the sky. And when they look up, they see a star that's different. They see a star that's moving, but it's not a shooting star that disappears. It's a star that as they start to move, it moves. And in fact, in verse 7, it says, Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring word that I too may come and worship him. And after listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they'd seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. So these astrologers who know the sky see this star and they are able to follow it to the point that it literally stops over the place where Jesus lay. And this is the first time joy is mentioned concerning the Lord Jesus. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And what I wanted to make an application for us today is that people in the wisdom of the world as they peer through the darkness that is this world, they are looking for glimmers of hope. They're looking for glimmers of light. And, and what they're doing is they're peering around trying to find you. And they're trying to find me. Jesus, as he grew up, said in the Sermon on the Mount, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. 
He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven so that they can rejoice with exceedingly great joy. We can represent that light for others, and we must represent that light for others in this dark world that we live in. And, and I thought about the, the, the fact that if it wasn't for this picture of hope, that star pointed to Christ, and Christ is the light that came to this world to turn what was darkness into light. And without Christ, that's all we have is darkness. And so um, we have an invitation that we're offering. If you have allowed the darkness in this world to affect your vision, to affect the way that you're, you're living, will you come back to the light? Will you come back to the Lord? But maybe you are still in darkness and you've not obeyed the gospel message. Jesus spoke to Nicodemus when he came to Jesus by night. He said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no one could do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus said, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. He explains that he must be born of water and the Spirit. Have you been born of water and the Spirit this evening? If not, you've not accessed that light. But you can tonight. If you have a need, please respond now while we stand and while we sing.